Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Emma Camp. Let's get started. Well, Robbie, liberal commentator James Carville appeared on CNN this weekend where he unleashed on young voters who are less than enthused about showing up at the polls for President Biden this November. Let's watch. But that's all right, you little 26 year old. You don't feel like the election's important to me. They're not addressing the issues that I care about. So my advice to tell these young people to get off your and go vote because you should vote like your entire future and the entire future of this United States depends on it because quite frankly, it does. And that's not an exaggeration. Well, I think he should be the Biden campaign's director with a message of, hey, young people, go F yourselves. <laughs> I, what I thought was interesting about this clip in particular is that it was framed um, in response to young people who are dissatisfied with Biden's response to Israel, uh, which I think is particularly uh, interesting because if you're dissatisfied with Biden because you think he's too soft on Israel, voting for Trump, yeah. which is the the re only real alternative. Well, no, we've really got our we've got our third only, okay. parties. <laughs> Let's not. I I'll that's be voting fair, third that's party fair, this election. But the only. Alternative yeah. that has any chance, realistic chance of winning, it's not going to be any better. Trump is going to be even more soft on Israel, most likely. Yeah. Um, and so if you are a young person, that's harder really on Israel. Right, or, or, yes, yes. Harder I mean, on. he's left it ambiguous, frankly. I'm not right. sure. He's not giving a definitive statement on what he would do differently. He said, uh, in fact, he said they need to wrap this up quicker because I think he knows the optics of it look Well, bad. I think if he's has more in common with you know, the traditional yeah. Republican line on Israel, he's more likely to be slightly more friendly than Democrats. But the thing is, fundamentally, Israel is an issue that unites both Democrats and Republicans, uh, and it has for a long time. So if you are really dissatisfied with the U.S. response to the Middle East, there isn't really a yeah. good option for you if, if that's your single issue. But there's also this idea, and, and I, I dispute, frankly, the characterization that young people disproportionately care about Israel or right. student loans or any of the other reasons that the you know the media is claiming oh pro progressive young people your Gen Zers uh, who are so mad about everything Biden represents and just want like leftist radicalism um, they they're not getting it and so they're not going to vote for Biden you know that's represent maybe that's representative of the student body of Columbia I don't know but if you look at you know the polls showing what what most ordinary young people want, they have the same concerns as everyone else. The economy is not what we want it to be. Inflation is a little bit too high. Housing prices are through the roof because we can't build any houses in this country because regulation makes it impossible, and so on and so forth. Their top concerns are the same as everyone else's. Um, the kind of progressive wish list stuff is, is in dead last. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, most young people didn't even go to college, right? Yeah. And so what we're seeing on college campuses really is only representative of a very small portion of American young people. Yeah, I, I think that's the case. Um, we get dis we disproportionately pay attention to what the very um, active, vocal, loud young people who are online and on college campuses are saying, even though most me members of the generation are just, are, they're, they're similar to other voters. So my point being, I don't think there's some pressure Biden is maybe facing from progressive media figures to move to the left on uh, on or uh, now he's not actually changing any policies about Israel, but to 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 signal to progressive young people that he's going to do something for them. I think the student loans push came a lot from that. But I like, you're going to lose more voters if they went ahead and forgave like the student loans of all of all these people who are protesting at Columbia who who can't be you know bothered to finish out their school year to do their exams to show up to their graduation they all get suspended they don't get degrees and then we the American taxpayers are supposed to pay for that and Biden authorizes that that would make him even more unpopular he's going to he would do himself harm I think I could be wrong do himself harm by leaning in a more progressive direction. Oh, absolutely. Again, most young people didn't go to college, yeah. right? And I, and I do think a lot of the dissatisfaction around the Biden-Trump rematch is from a growing kind of belief that there isn't a lot to divide them. You know, obviously, I think aesthetically, there's a whole lot to divide them, right? Biden, you know, Trump's despite a lot his of crazy old age, stuff, right, and exactly. Biden doesn't know where he is. Right, right. Um, it's sort of a decision between, you know, senile and senile, but maybe wants to be president for yeah. life. Ne neither, yeah. I feel like, are great options. But, you know, as we at Reason have been hammering for a long time, there really is this increasing 
uh, acceptability of authoritarianism on both the left and right, you know, when it comes to economic policy, when it comes to support for stifling disfavored speech, the left and right are really starting to agree uh, more than they have before. Um, and, and they're really not disagreeing so much on a lot of actual yeah. policy. And I guess the middle is letting it happen. I mean, every, you know, everyone is, we're in this era of, I think, significant hypocrisies on so many issues, just being openly embraced by political figures and their constituents. Like now we have, you know, and I am concerned, we talked about this in the other segment, I am concerned, even though I, I agree that a lot of the protests are bad and what they're calling for is, I totally disagree with it. If we have a crackdown on the protesting that's based on, you know, the, the in some cases subjective fear that students on campus would have that, oh, this is harassment or, oh, this is violence. Well, that's the exact kind of thing, you know, we've railed against, I've railed against, you've railed against it in your writing for so many years, having, having speech delegitimized on the basis of someone else's subjective safety fears. And, and progressives have been doing that for years and years and years and years. And now the shoe's on the other foot a little bit. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing some people on the right pushback. I did see a lot of pushback, uh, for instance, when you, know, you wrote about this the other day, when Richie Torres and another person said, oh, there should be like a federal yeah. um, anti-Semitism coordinator who's dispatched by the federal government right. on well, college campuses. Is, yes, how, how that particular bill would work is that the education department could appoint an anti-Semitism monitor for no, a you. college and they would have to pay for this anti-Semitism monitor. Oh yes, and it would just lead to colleges suppressing First Amendment protected speech. And you know, I would like to think that a lot of progressives seeing what's happening in response to anti-Israel protests would be more likely to reconsider this idea that we should stifle speech based off of, you know, subjective feelings, but I don't think that's happening. And in fact, based on some particularly viral kind of embarrassing moments uh, from these uh, pro-Palestine protesters, you know, freak outs about like mice that were injected with poison or something, you know, one. the banana what? thing. <laughs> there have been some pretty, I, it's, I don't want to say too much about this. There was this a mice thing. There I was a mice look. thing. There was a thing with like a banana allergy, basically mm. having this sort of hysterical response to small sort of uh, incidents, un yeah. unkind incidents against them. Um, I think show that they are continuing to lead to lean into the you know I feel attacked, um, yeah. you know try, trying to frame. I wouldn't call those things as speech necessarily, but yeah, basically embracing emotional fragility. I'd honestly be more. Uh, I, I think Biden would be more likely to be reelected if he started making fun of the protesters. <laughs> I think you then everybody like you know the right people would be like, well, this is what happens with John Fetterman. John Fetterman has dramatically increased his favorability, his popularity, right. because he sounds kind of based on some stuff. And I still substantively disagree with him on like tons of policies, including industrial and economic policies. He's, you know, part of that kind of horseshoe of, you know, new right people and left people who want more protectionism. So I very much do not uh, appreciate his policies, but him just saying, no, the protesters are pro Hamas and they're bad, like makes you right. go like, yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's been very Biden could do that too. Right. I think that's been very frustrating to me about these protests is I do think there are plenty of legitimate grievances that you know, pe people who are pro-Palestine can have, right? Like the, I think it's perfectly fine to criticize the way Israel has pursued this war. Yeah, and the I want them to have their own state. They right. should get a state. Everybody gets their own state. But it, it is so strange to me why so many college students are finding it so difficult to make those legitimate grievances. Yeah without also supporting terrorism. Right, there's also a terrorist organization in charge of right. that area of the world. Right, like I, I think it's bad when any innocent civilians are yeah. killed, but that is not really the prevailing message at these protests, or at the very least, the protests are getting the most media attention. Mm. All right, we'll be back with more right after this.